All right, chat. Let's make sure. Okay. Type one if your memes are not very dank. Or two if your memes are super dank. All right. I'm seeing a super dank. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Three. That is even memeier. I hadn't even thought about that. Okay, we got a four. Okay. All right. Seems everybody gets the gist of how that works then. Um, okay. So that is going to be a big part of that. Now, I also need my novel AI up and running. We're going to test things out with the free okay let's go text adventure this time and see if that is a better option okay now that we know how the voting works don't know what dank means <laughs> boy you don't want to fight me night wait you don't want to fight me night <laughs> i have something wrong Okay, okay, so, for those of you who are unfamiliar with how things work in the Kanto region, you are going to be starting out in Pallet Town, heading on through to Pewter City to try and get your first badge. From there, you'll head on to Cerulean City uh, to get your second badge, to Vermilion City to get your third badge, Celadon to get your... Uh, fourth badge, then you move on to Fuchsia City down near the bottom there, and then you will need to go to Saffron, Cinnabar, and finally Viridian. Lavender is an optional. You will need to go there if you want to get the Snorlax, however. Power Plant, again, optional, however... That is the only place you can find a Zapdos. Same with Seafoam Islands, only place that you can find an Articuno. And Victory Road, you will need to state that if you want to go after a Moltres, that you want to go after a Moltres. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen... It is simple. I will take over the first bit of the story here. Ah, welcome to the country of Kanto. I'll be your guide along the journey here. This is you. And this is your journey. Chat. What will you name yourself? What are your names, chat? Gut boy. <laughs> All right. We'll have Gut Bull the trainer. All right. What else, chat? What are we thinking? Who, uh, who's got some names? All right, we got Bull Boy. Oh, Parkser. Okay, we got Parkser. All right, chat. Any last second ones? Get your your uh, your thoughts in, or forever hold your peace. We're sitting at Gut Bull, Bull Boy, and Parkser. All right, that's time, chat. That's time. Start the poll. The poll is now open. Will it be Gut Bull, Bull Boy, or Parkser? Also, chat, we need a little bit of background. Okay, 
hopefully that isn't too bad. Pat Staru brings it back to a tie. In situations like this, we will have to flip a coin. Okay, we, we want to keep it legit. Okay, chat. Okay. That's... That is Tails. That is Tails. Your name is now Gutbull. As the professor comes and pulls you into his laboratory, you see somebody else. Let's hope this doesn't go as bad as the first time. This is your rival. Professor Oak will look at you and say, Hmm, this is my grandson. Uh, what was his name again? All right, chat. What is your rival's name? All right, Dick Turkey. <laughs> um, Big Donger. Wait, Mega Meme. Okay, okay. Mega meme for the explosions. Spelt exactly how Merle told me to spell it as well. Our rival is Mega Meme. They can only cast one spell a day. All right. The pull is open, chat. One for Dick Turkin. Two for Big Donger. Three for Jimbo. Four for Mega Meme. Big Donger is my name. <laughs> ah, that's right. My grandson's name is Big Donger. Ah. Well, you two are about the same age, and as such, it's about time you two fucked off into the real world and got yourselves a job. Being my slave. Indentured. All right, you little bastards. You need to get out of here. You move down with that other guy. Okay, there we go. You're gonna want to take out a Pokemon with you before you go into the long grass. Otherwise, you'll get mauled and ripped apart by vicious animals that inhabit the world known as Pokemon. They're our friends. They'll help us do stuff like pack boxes and throw your wife through the window. But... There's a darker side as well. They fight for clout. You now must pick your partner to defend you through thick and thin. Will you choose the fire type Charmander? He's a spunky son of a bitch. No, you don't get no Mewtwo to start. I've deleted him from the game for now, chat. Will you take the very fashionable Squirtle? It's a turtle, but it squirts. Look at that son of a bitch. He's got aviators. He's the sickest turtle you'll ever see. Will you take the grass-type Bulbasaur? It's literally got a tree on its back. Or at least it will. Or finally... Will you take this surprised Pikachu? It's definitely the biggest meme, but will be absolutely useless in theory against your first gym opponent. We want both. I will allow you to make your next move if you want to try and steal a Pokemon after... After the, like, the actual beginning starts here. Okay, okay. We'll start with the Pikachu. Alright, chat has chosen their first asset. 
is a Pikachu. Your rival is going to choose bulb so hard. I'll smell you nerds later. Okay. What will your first move be, chat? Are you going to rob this poor professor and steal another Pokemon? Okay, so we have steal a Charmander. We want to call Parkser to come shoot the professor for us using his gun so we can take all the Pokemon. Okay, get a Mew. Have Parkser shoot our right. <laughs> all right, our options are steal a Pokemon from the professor, have Parkser kill the professor and take his remaining Pokemon, or get a Mew. I kind of want to allow it just because it <laughs> came in as a tiebreaker, hilariously enough. I think, wait. Oh, no, wait, it didn't come in as a tiebreaker. It's just an ass. Here we go, chat. Gutbull, who just moved to the Kanto region, has chosen Pikachu as their partner. Gutbull and Pikachu set off forthwith to find and capture legendary Pokemon Mew. Along the way, they meet up with other trainers, including Gutbull's old friend, a star who has also been traveling to the Kanto or traveling to Kanto in search of his next challenge. A shiny Magikarp! Ah! 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 <laughs> you can't even fucking make this shit up. Uh, I don't know why he's looking for this in a grassy field. To the west lies the path which leads back to town. Not exactly accurate. There are no threats here. There's nothing else for you to do right now but to catch fish in a grassy field. Um, you can go north or east to locate some water, but Gutbull knows there must be a mew somewhere nearby. So he starts by searching uh, for Mew tracks. And then the f and then following them from place to place, he finds it. As he travels through the forest, Gut Bull gets lost from time to time due to getting turned around as well as not being familiar with the area. Gut Bull sends Pikachu to start battling uh, the Mew. Well, he stands on guard, watching out for any enemies nearby, as well as for hidden entrances to this dungeon. After a few minutes, Pikachu returns holding an injured Mew in its claws. Pikachu tells Gutbull that the Mew is badly hurt. When it's attacked by a, oh shit, what's gonna happen? By a wild Pikachu, the Mew wasn't able to defend itself and got severely beaten up. Pikachu asks Gutbull if he wants to keep the injured Mew or let it die. <laughs> well, I don't know, chat. Do you want to keep the injured Mew or let it die? We want to take our Mew to a Poka hospital, okay. You have yourself a Mew now. Is it shiny? Gutbull examines to see if the Mew is shiny. The Mew is indeed a shiny Pokemon. Gutbull decides to keep the Mew and names him Mew. <laughs> Hi, you have a Mew named Mewtwo. Gutbull and Mewtwo continue their journey through the forest and reach the cave at the top. We'll say that you guys have gone through the grasslands between um, Pallet Town and Viridian is what we'll say. That's where you guys are right now. So you're essentially going into Viridian City with your new Mew. Meanwhile, Big... Donger 
In the meantime, Big Donner, Big Donger asks Professor Oak, who happens to be his grandfather, if he can borrow the convertible and pack it full of, wait, hot babes. Hot babes. <laughs> hot babas. Hot babes for his road trip. Professor Oak agrees without hesitation and tells Donger to come back when he's done. Donger leaves with the car and heads southeast towards Jodo. <laughs> I'm already like, fuck it, I'm out. When he reaches the dock, he asks one of the fishermen, what's the best spot to catch some Pokemon? The fisherman tells him that there's a lake about 20 miles southeast. <laughs> Donger loads up the car with girls and drives off to get ready to battle the Pokemon. You're in a grassy field. What will you do next to counter this? You are... Wait, let's bring us back to the map. You are in Viridian City. You guys have a injured Mew. Think we should steal a helicopter? <laughs> okay, well, we can make steal a helicopter. What if we recruit Mecha Godzilla to destroy the convertible? Okay, that'll be two different turns. Mew can use its heal, okay. What if we have Mew take us home to meet their family? Then we could have a whole team of Mews at once. We want that one, okay. They ask Mew, the shiny Mew, they ask the shiny Mew named Mewtwo if he could introduce you to his family. He says, sure! Just before he arrives in Viridian City, he gets a call from his mother telling him that a rival team is looking for him. She gives him directions to her house. Gut Bull pleads with the family of Mew to join his his journey battling the gym leaders they say no thank you gut bull says maybe next time then Mewtwo asks you if you want to battle a gym leader you tell him yes but only if he will agree to go first alright chat so you do not get the full, the family of Mews. So technically, Viridian Forest is also home to Pikachu. We offer Pikachu as a sacrifice? Holy shit! As Big Donger drives through Viridian Forest, he attempts... To catch... I'm gonna go for a Weedle, chat. I don't think there's any advantage to having a Weedle, but we're going for it. When he finally catches it, he takes it to the Pokemon Center to heal up. After he is healed, he sends the wheel Weedle out into a, a battle a Grass-type trainer. Weedle defeats the trainer and earns a place in Donger's party. <laughs> What if we breed Parkser and Mew? I mean, you uh, are more than welcome to call up Parkser and ask if he is willing to mate with a Mew. What will chat do next? Are you gonna breed Pikachu and uh, Mew? I almost called it Mew. <laughs> uh, breed Parkser who is a lawyer. Say we sacrifice Puka Pikachu to the Muse. What if we entered a cheat code? I don't think there really is cheat codes. 
There is one exploit, but it could potentially delete your save file. And it just doubles either like balls, uh, have Mew steal an Eevee. What if we have Mew teleport us to the inside of the candy warehouse? Then we feed them all the candy and max out their stats. One for Breed Pikachu and Mew. Two for Breed Parkser. He's a lawyer and Mew. Sacrifice Pikachu to Mews to gain their alliance. Have Mew steal an Eevee or have Mew teleport to a candy factory. All right, we're going to the candy factory, chat. All right, Gutbull asks Mew if he can teleport them into the candy factory to max out their stats. Mewtwo agrees. They arrive at the candy factory and get teleported into the room full of all sorts of candy. Gutbull quickly grabs enough candy to give Mew a huge boost in speed and strength. You have the candies, I just don't know... I mean, it does make your fight in Pewter more simple. You're now in Pewter City, chat. All right, chat. Big Donner has arrived with his convertible full of babes to Pewter City. He meets with the gym leader, Brock, and asks if he wants to go for a ride with the babes. Uh, Brock accepts, and they drive off together while driving through the streets of Pewter. Brock and Donger have a quick conversation about their Pokemon. Brock tells him that he that his team consists of a Cinnabar evolutions of a Cinnabar evolutions of his starter Pokemon, a Sligly older than normal, a slightly older than normal Electrike, and a new evolved Mewtwo. <laughs> <laughs> Donger thanks Brock for his assistance and praises him for a great battle. Mewtwo asks you if you want to battle another gym leader. Big Donger tells Mewtwo, yes, I want to fight all the gym leaders. Can I have the boulder badge, please? Mewtwo is happy to grant the wish and teleports you into the gym. There's no opponent in the gym. Gutpool asks Mew if he could teleport them into a mall for some shopping and some more training. Big Dogger will ask Brock if it's okay if he takes a gym badge. Mewtwo teleports them into a mall in Kanto, what? <laughs> There's no one in the mall. Gutbull asks Mew if he can teleport them into a candy store. I don't have confirmation that I got a badge there. So it's back to you guys. Pull is live. Find an adoption center. Sacrifice Pikachu for a badge. Try and have Mew steal the badge. Have Mew will a boulder badge into existence. Luna saying she's choosing heads for the coin flip. Chat, I can't even see it. Oh, it's tails. It is tails. That means have Mew will a boulder badge into existence. All right, gut bull. Asks Mewtwo to try and will a boulder badge into existence. Mewtwo tries his hardest to will a boulder badge into existence, but fails. He tells Gutbull that it will take a lot more practice to be able to will things like this into reality. Ooh, chat. Okay, we're both stuck on the boulder badge. Big Dogger tells Brock, Hey, nerd, you owe me after that car ride, and pulls his worm out to convince Brock to give him the boulder badge. Brock takes the bait and gives Donger the boulder badge. Mewtwo teleports them to a desert area near the Pokestop and Pokemon Tower. In the desert, a sandstorm is raging with lightning strikes everywhere. It looks like the rival is the first to take a boulder badge. We can find Zapdos in Thunder. Wait, was it you that got... T Wait. I think this is Brock's teleport... Or Brock's Mewtwo teleported me, I think. Because Brock also has a Mewtwo for whatever reason. No, actually, Brock has a Mewtwo. You have a Mew that's named Mewtwo. <laughs> Your next move, you still have to get the boulder badge before you can move on. 
Do we get his Mewtwo also? Kill Brock to take all his possessions. All right, that is an option. We want to kill him. Gutbull, who is now furious, his rival already has a badge, decides to try and kill Brock and take all his possessions. After a long fight, the two end up being knocked unconscious and left for dead. In the morning, they wake up inside the ruins of the Pokestop. What happened? Gutbull wakes up first and sees that he's still carrying the boulder badge. All right. Sounds like chat has also received the boulder badge. We can kill him again while well, he's dead. <laughs> so it just says that you got the boulder badge there. Can we try and kill him again while he's down? Now, this is where things get convoluted. You could head towards Mount Moon. Mount Moon does have Clefairy. Or you can continue your adventure towards Cerulean. Big Donger continues towards Cerulean City in his swag convertible when he notices a sick Pidgey, so he tries to catch it. It's a shiny Pidgey! Donger asks the Pidgey if he'd like to be his partner, and it says yes! Donger calls it Pidgey. <laughs> And it battles a trainer in the area and beats them easily. Yes! Pidgey the Pidgeot! Well, I'm down here catching a, ri or a Pidgey and fighting some dude. What would you guys like to do next? Murder? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. A murder... <laughs> murder Brock. And take his possessions. We are murdering Brock while he's still unconscious? Alright, this city has seen some shit. While Brock is knocked out on the ground, Gutbull attempts to kill Brock and take all his stuff. Brock is barely able to defend himself and defeats Gutbull! After the battle, Brock remarks how good of a battler Gutbull is and offers him a rematch. Gutbull <laughs> agrees to a rematch. I'll let you guys have another attempt because I'm kind of a bit further ahead than you guys right now. Gutbull challenges Brock to another battle to the death. Gutbull challenges Brock to another battle to the death. During the second battle, Brock is able to defeat Gutbull with ease. Brock then takes all of Gutbull's belongings. No! Chat. Chat. You've just been bamboozled. You guys have been had. You guys have lost your boulder badge and your candies. I will allow you to keep your Pikachu and your shiny Mew, uh, Mew named Mewtwo because otherwise y your game would be over, I think. <laughs> Wait until Brock goes to bed, break in? Okay, okay. Big Donger enters Cerulean City and heads straight to Misty and offers her a job being a hot babe in his convertible in exchange for the Cascade badge. Misty accepts the offer. A few hours later, Big Dogger is driving through the streets of Cerulean City when he runs over a Pidgey! No! No! Dogger stops the car and goes to pick up the Pidgey. Okay, we need... We need a closure to this story. What happens to the Pidgey? The Pidgey tells him that it caught a shiny... <laughs> Donger is thrilled to hear this news and asks the Pidgey to show him where he found the Mew. Okay, I'm not allowed to go after the Mew this turn, but I guess I do have the Cascade badge as well as Misty is now one of the babes. Still back 
in Pewter City. So you guys have some catch-up to do. Murder? Okay, we're starting the poll. Looks like this is a pretty unanimous murder, Brock. Okay. All right, chat. Let's see if this works out for you this time. Gutball won't take this travesty lying down and waits until the cover of night and for Brock to fall asleep before sneaking into his house to kill him once and for all and reclaim their possessions. Brock is sleeping soundly when Gutball attacks him. He stabs Brock Hart repeatedly with a knife to make sure he's dead. Gutpool removes Brock's pocket and kills it. Poke it. He, re he removes the poke it. You uh, get... What is this? Uh, your candy back. You get your... Uh, badge back. And you get the Mewtwo. Does this mean we now have the gym? We could change the boulder badge so that Dogger is no longer Val? <laughs> I don't know. I think if you claim the gym as your own, that starts an investigation into murder. <laughs> All right, back in Cerulean City, Big Donger asks the... Oh, wait. No, okay, that's what I want. Ask the Pidgey if he or that he ran over where the Mew is that he caught and if Donger can take the Mew. The Pidgey shows him where the Mew was and tells him that it's in a Pokemon Center far, far away. Big Donger thanks the Pidgey for its help and drives off to the Pokemon Center in Fuchsia City. Once he arrives, he asks the nurse if she has a Pikachu, and she says that that Pikachu is resting in a room across the hallway, that he won't be awake for a while. Okay, now we have to let it generate. What happens next? Donger goes into the room to get the Pikachu. Donger opens the door and sees a shiny Pikachu sleeping in the corner. Donger takes the Pikachu and heads back to Saru. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Pidgey lied to me, dude. Pidgey fucking lied to me. Chat, back over to you guys. What would you like your next move to be? Use the candies to max out Mewtwo. Breed Parkser's gun with Mew. Uh, force Mewtwo to mind control Misty to give us the badge. Can we train? You could train. If you're gonna train, I would say like, I guess if you train, we can consider money earned uh, to be a resource. So I guess we'll say that I don't have any money right now. All right, the poll's now live, chat. Do we want to breed Parkser's gun with a Mew? Do we want to train against trainers to get money? Try to get another Mew or breed Mew and Mewtwo. You didn't even vote for that, Merle. <laughs> All right, chat. Gutbull asks Mew if he knows any other Mews willing to join their adventure. Mewtwo tells him to talk to the Mew... Tropolis. Ta Wait. Tells him to talk to Mewtropolis about that. Gutbull visits Mewtropolis and talks to a bunch of Mews, but none are interested in joining the cause. Okay, so you guys have moved down here now. You're getting close to Cerulean. We should get the Mewtropolis batch. <laughs> I mean, if you want to continue with Mewtropolis, you can continue to try and see what you can do over there. Big Donger hears of a Pokemon expert named Bill. He heads to Bill's house to find he inhabits the body of a Chansey. Big Donger attempts to catch the Bill... Catch Bill the Chansey. So he can use it as a gym badge! When he arrives at Bill's house, he sees that the Chansey is sleeping. Donger opens the door quietly and sneaks into the room. Okay, we need more explanation as to what happens next. 
Bill wakes up, sees you, and screams for help. A few la a seconds later, the police arrive and arrest you. Mewtwo teleports you back to the Bell uh, Pokestop in Pewter City. Um. Well. Uh. That did not play out the way I was thinking it would. All right. I think I'm a wanted fugitive in Cerulean now. Uh, that did not work out for me. Chat, where will you guys go next? I am uh, apparently back in Pewter City. Say we do something completely different? Ooh, like what? Offer the corpse of Brock as a bribe for them to join us? Okay, so we have offer Brock's corpse to the Muse for their cooperation. Uh, just learn explosion magic yourself? We just got Brock's corpse on us at all times? I guess so. I guess Brock's corpse is now a commodity. Okay, chat, poll is going live. <clears throat> One to offer over Brock's corpse to the Muse for their cooperation. You can learn explosion magic, become Mace Windu's apprentice, or try and team up with the dark side. All right, become Darth Vader's apprentice. All right, chat. Gut Bull calls up Darth Vader and offers to become his apprentice and asks to learn about the dark side of the Force. Darth Vader accepts and invites Gut Bull to a meeting in a secret location. When Darth Vader arrives at the undisclosed location, he realizes that Gut Bull isn't there. A voice tells him that Gut Bull is late and that he should wait for him outside. Gut Bull and Darth Vader meet again at the abandoned warehouse. Gut Bull apologizes for being late and explains how his rival killed his family and took all his belongings. What? Wow, I'm getting called out. Darth Vader says that he understands Gut Bull's pain and that he's going to teach Gut Bull. <clears throat> I hate that it makes me use a generation. <laughs> Teach Gut Bull how to master the dark side of the Force. Darth Vader teaches Gut Bull how to control the dark side of the Force. You're in a grassy field. After Gut Bull arrives in Viridian City, they ask the shiny Mew named Mewtwo if... That's twice. It's just cut off mid-sentence. If... He would introduce you to his family. He says, sure, they head for home. Just before they arrive in Viridian City, he gets a call from his mother telling him that a rival team is looking for him. Dark side of the force. I don't know if I'd say you're, like, mastered in it. I wouldn't say that, like, you're, you're, you're just a Padawan at this point. So, you have dark side powers, but, like... Your Mew could probably still fuck you up, I guess. Probably. Uh, you are in Cerulean now, and uh, you could have gone for the water badge last time, to be honest. Big Donger hears rumors that Gut Bowl is becoming a Sith and requests Goku come help him and train to use the Spirit Bomb. After he makes Goku his apprentice, they head to Bill's house in the middle of the night. <laughs> they break into the basement and find Bill chained up. Gut Bull is trapped under a rock. All right, I'm back halfway to Cerulean. Now, what are you guys going to do? Technically, Misty is part of my group, so you won't be fighting Misty. You'll be fighting the Misty sisters for... Uh, for 
the the next gym badge, the cascade badge. Want to do an actual battle? One for battling Misty, two for using Jedi mind tricks to trick Misty into uh, giving you the mind bat or the the cascade badge. Kill Misty in her sleep. Or use Brock's corpse to frame Misty in a suicide homicide situation. And chatbot wants one. <laughs> Once arriving in Cerulean City, Gutbull decides it's safest. Wait, to wait until nightfall to sneak into Misty's sister's house to assassinate them and steal the Cascade badge. Gutbull sneaks in inside his sister's room. Well, they sleep and prepares to murder them both. Misty wakes up. Okay, we're just gonna say Misty's sister wakes up as Gutbull is about to plunge the blade into her chest. Misty knocks Gutbull unconscious with a swift kick to the face and drags him to the <laughs> butler. Is trapped so she in his can body. Hide him somewhere Misty safe. is caught by she the hides cultist Gutbull and under the sink and goes back to bed. Okay, back over to me then. We'll return to you guys and you being under a sink in just a few moments. Big Donger notices it's all out pandemonium in Cerulean City and uses this opportunity to continue moving towards Saffron City. Big Donger heads towards Saffron City in his convertible. He passes by a school on the way and sees some kids playing the game. He decides to stop and play the game himself. Donger plays for a while, but quickly gets bored. Okay, I want to see where this goes. I don't think this is going to get us anything. So, uh, a boy about 10 years old comes up to Big Donger and introduces himself as Kurt. Kurt asks if you know to battle against a gym leader because his dad just beat the... gym leader in their district, and now he's going to challenge him to a rematch. Big Donger agrees to help Kurt and his father's gym challenge so long as Kurt will help him defeat the gym leader in Saffron City. Well, you have been knocked out in Misty's sister's house and are now under a sink. So what's your next play? Pull is live. Kill Kurt the 10-year-old boy. Rescue by Mew and Mewtwo. Or ask the Pokemon what they would like to do. Gutbull regains consciousness and realizes he's under a sink. He asks his Pikachu, Mew, and Mewtwo what they should do next to get the Cascade Badge. Mewtwo tells Gutbull, also I don't know if this is Mew, the Mewtwo... Or, I mean, the Mewtwo... No, the Mew named Mewtwo, or if this is the actual Mewtwo. But Mewtwo tells Gutbull to come with him to the gym challenge... Uh, to The gym to... Ja cha da -da 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 fuck. Challenge Misty. Mewtwo says that he will help him train so he can beat Misty. Gutbull says, okay. But he doesn't trust Mewtwo to help him much because you'll... Probably just let him win. Mewtwo replies, I'll help him as best I can. Gutbull tells Mewtwo that Misty is actually a really great battler, but he might have no chance against her unless he learns some new moves. Oh, are you going to learn new moves? Okay, let's see where this goes. Mewtwo says he will help Gutbull trained to be the perfect battler. Gutbull thanks Mewtwo for his help and promises to repay him once he wins the Cascade Badge. Big Dogger finds a big field and asks Goku to teach him how to use the Spirit Bomb. Goku teaches Big Dogger how to use the Spirit, do uh, spirit Bomb. Big Dogger uses the Spirit Bomb, the spirit bomb on a wild Pidgey, which is the defeated instantly and appears to be a shiny Pidgey. Uterp says, 
Wow, Big Donger's been busy. Maybe you should take a quick pic of his awesome looking Big Donger. <laughs> what is going on here? Okay. <laughs> I gotta make sure I don't see any Big Dongers. <laughs> There's Kurt. There's <laughs> Look how fucking hench his legs are. <laughs> the prompt is, in the meantime, Big Dogger asks Professor Oak, who happens to be his grandfather, if he can borrow the convertible and pack it full of hot babes for his road trip. Professor agrees to this without hesitation and tells Dogger to come back when he's done. <laughs> You guys still have to get this water badge, so please, for the love of God, get the water badge. <laughs> Let's just make a counterfeit one? Okay. Gutbull asks Bill the Chansey if he can make a counterfeit cascade badge. Bill says yes. Gutbull makes the fake cascade badge and puts it under his pillow. <laughs> Gutbull is waiting for Misty in the gym, but she doesn't show up. Bill shows up and tells Gutbull that Misty asked him to deliver a message for him. What's the message? The message was that he is not allowed to fa fight Misty today. Gutbull asks Bill why Misty wanted him to stay away. Bill tells Gutbull that the battle between him and Misty is too important for Misty and herself to lose. <laughs> Bill is worried that Misty will get hurt, or worse, if they don't keep the battle secret. Gutbull asks Bill why Misty wants to keep the match a secret. Bill says that he can't tell anybody about the match because it's top secret, and even though the Cascade badge is isn't actually as big of a deal as the Pokemon League Championship, Misty is still very concerned about losing the match. Gutbull tells Bill that he promised to win the Cascade badge for her and that she's counting on him. So, you got the badge. I think you can just, like, walk away now. <laughs> I gotta bring it up every once in a while that I have a convertible full of babes. Big Donger will head towards, or head forward toward a two Vermilion city with his new companion Kurt in the convertible full of babes. You're in Vermilion City. This is a large port city. It's located on the eastern shore of the Sapphire Sea. Vermilion Port is an open-air marketplace where travelers from many regions can purchase goods and services. I'll let it ride two more just to see if I take advantage of goods and services. The city itself has been built on reclaimed land and is surrounded by a wall. In the central courtyard, there's a fountain with two statues, a Venusaur and a Blastoise. The port is home to many ships traveling between two cities of Kanto. There are many fishing boats, and the local fishermen sell their fresh catches at the market. There's a dark, a, a dark. There's a dock where ships can tie up and travel to another city or town along the coast. I do not do anything with that turn, but I have arrived in Vermilion City, chat. What would you do next, chat? All right, here's your options, chat. Got two. It's one, try to counterfeit the next badge, or two, teleport into the treasury and steal enough riches to buy off the gym leaders. All right, we got a confirmed two. All right, chat. Gut Bull will try to convince the shiny Mew named Mewtwo. They should teleport into the treasury and heist as much gold as they can carry. Mewtwo says that sounds like fun! Gutbull teleports to the treasury and finds Mewtwo! He tells him about Misty's plan to fight him and to steal as much money as possible. Mewtwo says he has an idea. He thinks it would be cool if they used the money to buy a spaceship and travel around the universe. 
Gutpool agrees and says they should go back to tell everybody about their plans. They return to the gym and explain the plan to the rest of the team. They agree to help. Gutpool te tells the team to wait outside while he leaves the gym. Gutpool heads over to Misty's house. Okay, we gotta, uh, we gotta ride this one out here for a sec. Gutpool enters Misty's house and calls out his Pikachu. Gutpool asks his Pikachu to find the Cascade Badge. Pikachu flies off and returns with the Cascade Badge. I guess you get a legit Cascade Badge now? Gutpool puts the badge under his pillow <laughs> and whispers to his Pikachu to guard the badge. <laughs> guard the badge. Gutbull returns to the gym. All the Pokemon are gathered at the gym waiting for him. Gutbull tells them uh, all about his plan. Mewtwo says that he's excited and ready to help. Gutbull tells the team to pack everything they need for their trip. Everyone packs up and heads to the treasury. Okay, now here we go. The group reaches the treasury and finds it's empty. No one's there. Gutbull asks Mewtwo where everyone went. Mewtwo says they left and were hi heading to the stadium. Gutbull exclaims, this is the perfect time to pull off the heist. They attempt to steal all the gold they can. Mewtwo says he's sure everyone is in this stadium and will be distracted by the tournament. He thinks they have a good chance of getting away with as much gold as they can carry before anyone notices. They sneak into the stadium and make their way to the trophy case. Mewtwo lifts up the trophy case and the treasure chest beneath it pops open. The team starts digging through the treasure. A large amount of gold coins spills out onto the floor. Gutbull picks up a handful of gold and looks around. A voice behind him says, What do you think you're doing? Gutbull turns around and sees a Pokemon trainer standing there. She's wearing a referee uniform. She says, I'm sorry, you can't be here. Okay, what happens next? Gutbull says that he came to collect the trophy and the gold. The trainer says that she won't allow him in and that she must, or he must leave immediately. Gutbull grabs the Cascade badge from under his pillow and tells the trainer that he'll give her the badge if she lets him. Also, let's, let's him pass. The trainer says that she will not let him pass unless he gives her the Cascade badge. Gutbull hands over the Cascade badge to the trainer and lets him into the stadium. Gutbull takes the prize money and runs back to the treasury. After hanging out with the hot babes and Misty on the beach in Vermilion City, Bigger, Big Donger heads to Lieutenant Sarge's gym. Big Donger challenges Sarge to an epic rap battle for his gym badge. Sarge accepts the challenge and the two begin to duel. The battle rages on and on until finally Sarge uses his Powerful flamethrower move. Whoa, he's spitting fire, chat. The flame damage is too much for Donger's convertible to handle, causing it to explode and kill both Sergeant. <laughs> oh no! Not my car and Kurt! You wake up in a small prison cell. You've been charged with murder and conspiracy to commit murder. The judge sentences. You had a life imprisonment and a fine of $25. I didn't do anything. The lawyer tells you that your appeal will take a long time and that you might not get a favorable ruling and that you should plead guilty to reduce the sentence. What's next for our intrepid adventurer, chat? One, for go to Mutropolis to befriend more Mews, or two, to go back to Mutropolis to become a Mew. Gutbull asks Mew if he can teleport them back to Mutropolis so that Gutbull can be transformed into a Mew himself. Mewtwo says that sounds like a pretty good deal. 
As soon as Mewtwo teleports them back to Mewtropolis, a rainbow beam of light shoots out from the trophy case and transforms Mewtwo into Mew. And you get ever closer to Vermilion City. Big Donger knows there's only one man who will be able to prove his innocence. Parkser, the lawyer, who is also a cop. Big Donger calls up Parkser and says, Parkser, Lieutenant Sarge used flamethrower to kill Kurt and my car. I need your help to get justice. Can you help me? <clears throat> Parkser agrees to help Big Donger. You tell Parkser everything that happened the night of the crime. Parkser listens intently and tells you that he will do everything he can to help you. You thank Parkser and tell him that you will meet him at the Pokestop in Cerulean City tomorrow morning. You hang up and feel relieved. The next day you drive to the Pokestop in Cerulean City and call Parkser. Parkser answers and tells you that he has some good news and some bad news. First, the bad news. A witness came forward and admitted that he had seen you and Sarge in the parking lot of the gym talking. The witness also said that he saw you put something in Sarge's pocket before he left. The good news is that since the evidence was circumstantial and the witness lied during the testimony, his prosecutor dropped all charges! Let's go! Parkser thanks you for helping him win his case. Parkser suggests you leave town as soon as possible. <laughs> you decide to go to Saffron City and catch a ferry to the mainland. <laughs> Let's go, Parkser! Big wins, dude. Big wins. I'm out of prison. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Chat, back over to you. You want an Arcanine. Should recruit a Mew army and declare war on Parkser? <laughs> While you are in Mewtropolis, you ask the Mew named Mewtwo and the Mewtwo named Mew if you can recruit more Mews to your team. Mewtwo says yes, and Mew asks if it can bring some friends along. You ask Mew how they, <laughs> how many Mews it would like, wait, how many Mews it would like to be able to summon, and Mew says it would like four. Well, Mew is being transformed into a Mew. <laughs> you ask the Mew named Mewtwo if you can recruit more Mews to its team. It says it would like five. Once Mew is finished, <laughs> you, you ask if it can summon five. Five Mews, and it says it can. You ask Mew what kind of Mew it wants to be, and Mew decides to be <laughs> a shiny Mew. <laughs> you arrive back in Mewtropolis and head over to the gym. I am going to sue Lieutenant Sarge's family for damages, including the murder of Kurt, the destruction of property, and the Thunder Badge. Parkser says that he'll need more evidence than what you gave him. He also tells you that he suspects that Lieutenant Sarge's parents are involved in the murder and cover-up. Parkser asks you to go back to Kanto and gather up any proof that could help Parkser's case. You agree to head to Kanto. In Kanto, you see the news bulletin about the murder of Kurt and the explosion of Big Donger's <laughs> You think back to when you were in Saffron City, the night of the murder. You remember that you had gone to pick up the Pokemon eggs that you and Kurt had collected from the Pokestop. You recall that the eggs that exploded belonged to the legendary Pokemon. And there is no way that was an accident. <laughs> you also remember that after you left the egg hatched, and that you found a mysterious note on the ground where the egg fell. That must be what blew up the car. 
You know that this is an important information, but you don't know how to find the person who left the note. You head to the gym and talk to Lieutenant Sarge. <laughs> Lieutenant Sarge is alive again. Claims that he didn't write the letter. You ask him why he would lie about it. Lieutenant Sarge admits that he had the motive for writing the letter and that it was indeed a threatening message to you. <laughs> you confront him about the fact that he tried to kill Kurt and Big Dogger and he is responsible for the explosion that killed them. <laughs> Lutar uh, Lieutenant Sergeant refuses to admit that he did anything wrong. After a heated argument, you punch Lieutenant Sergeant and knock him unconscious. You take him to the police station and turn yourself in. The poll is live, chat. All right, chat. Gutbull heads into the grass to try and catch a Rapidash. Gutbull manages to catch a Rapidash. Gutbull uses the Rapidash to ride back to the gym. Gutbull brings the Rapidash inside the gym to show everyone. Gutbull names the Rapidash Thomas, right? <laughs> Thomas has a bright golden coat, a yellow mane, and a black tail. His eyes are blue. <laughs> Gutbull tells the other Pokemon that he caught the Rapidash and that they could probably get ready for the tournament. You are now in Vermilion City and able to challenge the gym leader, by the way, on your next turn. Big Donger calls Parkser to meet him at the police station and explains that Lieutenant Sarge had left the explosive eggs and shows Parkser the threatening note that Lieutenant Sarge left and asks if this will be enough evidence of the murder plot. Parkser says that might be. Big Donger hands over the evidence and thanks Parkser, Parkster for his help. Oh, we're getting close now. So like, now I got a little nickname for Parkser. Parkser says that the case won't hold up in court without a confession of Lieutenant Sarge himself. However, he doesn't want to risk damaging the reputation of the Kanto police force by forcing Lieutenant Sarge to confess under duress. Instead, Parkser wants to make sure that the police department gets rid of Lieutenant, Lieutenant Sarge. Parkser suggests that you use your influence to get the chief to fire Lieutenant Sarge. You tell Parkser that you will do whatever it takes to get rid of Lieutenant Sarge. Even though you hate to betray your fellow officers. I'm a cop now. You call Chief Ketchum and explain your situation. Ketchum is sympathetic to your plight and promises not to let Lieutenant Sarge continue to work within the force if he isn't fired first. Chief Ketchum promises that he will act quickly and send someone to arrest Lieutenant Sarge right away. You thank Chief Ketchum and hang up. You call Lieutenant Sarge and warn him that the police department is looking for him. Why would I do that? Lieutenant Sergeant doesn't seem surprised or threatened. Lieutenant Sergeant simply says, good luck with that. Let's see if we can get an image of Gutbull here. Gutbull kind of a babe, though. <laughs> That's your, uh, your rapid ass. <laughs> Are we wearing tidy whiteies? I wouldn't say tidy whiteies. But definitely not your average equestrian outfit. That's for certain. <laughs> It really has a scene going on here. All right, well, Gutbull apparently is a female character. I don't even know what's happening here. So our prompt is Gutbull asks me if he can teleport him back to Mewtropolis so Gutbull can be transformed into a Mew himself. Mew sounds, that sounds like a pretty good deal. As soon as Mewtwo <laughs> teleports them back to Mewtropolis, a rainbow beam of light shoots out from the trophy case and transforms Mewtwo into Mew. Why do the Mews have boobs? <laughs> All right, polls live. 
Dot Bull has heard of a secret gym in Mutropolis and challenges the gym leader to a battle. The gym leader agrees to the battle Gut Bull. The two Pokemon face each other in the middle of the gym. The gym leader says that he will use his Pokemon to attack first. The gym leader uses Swift Claw to slice at Gut Bull's neck. The gym leader uses Swift Claw to attack. The gym leader tries to counter with a quick slash, but Gut Bull blocks with its shield. Uh, the gym leader then uses Quick Claw to slice at Gut Bull again. Gut Bull deflects the attack with his shield and counters with a shield bash. The gym leader is starting to wear down. Gut Bull goes in for the final attack. Before he can finish, the gym leader flings a rapid ash egg at Gut Bull. <laughs> what? The sudden impact knocks Gut Bull off his feet. The gym leader says that he's impressed and takes a moment to compose himself. He then says that he will now turn it, it to his Pokemon to finish Gut Bull off. But before he can finish, the gym leader flings <laughs> another rapid air. <laughs> uh, the gym leader calls his Pokemon forward and sends an avalanche towards Gut Bull. The avalanche hit Gut Bull and knocks him into the ground. The gym leader says that he's very pleased because this shows how strong his Pokemon really are. The gym leader congratulates Gut Bull on his victory and says he owes him a favor. Gut Bull thanks him for the compliment and the gym leader tells him that he can call upon him anytime. Chat is awarded the iconic secret hidden Mew badge, chat. Congratulations. Firm handshakes, firm handshakes. Big Donger realizes that Lieutenant Sarge is evil and that only he and Goku will be able to save the world from such villainy. Big Donger asks Goku to help him use the spirit bomb on Lieutenant Sarge. Goku agrees to help you destroy Lieutenant Sarge because he knows that Sarge is evil and must be stopped. You and Big Dong are summon the spirit ball and prepare to unleash it. Lieutenant Sarge arrives at the gym and Big Donger lures him outside by telling him that he needs to speak with you in private. <laughs> you lead the spirit bomb into the woods behind the gym where you and Big Donger will detonate. <laughs> as soon as you set off the bomb, Lieutenant Star Sarge sets up steps out from behind some bushes and tries to attack you. He throws a few punches at you, then grabs you and pushes you to the ground. I don't... Goku agrees. They head to the police station to confront Lieutenant Sarge. Lieutenant Sarge denies everything. You and Big Donger punch him in the face and drag him into a cell. <laughs> Lieutenant Sarge seems unfazed by the attack. Lieutenant Sarge simply laughs at you and... Wait... Lieutenant Sarge tells you that he has the same dream every night for the past 10 years. He's standing in front of the wall with a sign on it that reads, Do not enter. Lieutenant Sarge explains that the wall is a portal to another dimension through which he can travel between worlds. The other side of the portal is home to many powerful beings known as gods and demigods. If one god or demigod defeats another, then the defeated god or demigod is banished back to that world forever. Back to you guys. Poll is live. Type 1 if you want an Arcanine. Type 2 if you'd like to ask for the badge as a gift. Gut Bull meets with the new leader of Vermilion City, Jim, and asks if he can have the Thunder Badge as a gift. The leader of the gym says sure and gives Gut Bolt the Thunder Badge. <laughs> Gut Bolt tells his teammates to go get changed and then he will meet them in the lobby. Gut Bolt heads downstairs and finds the others in the lobby. All right, I've tried so many other ways. Big Donger thanks Lieutenant Sarge for the info and asks if he can have the Thunder Badge. Lieutenant Sergeant says yes and hands over the Thunderbat. I should have just asked him from the beginning. God damn it. Why did Kurt have to die? Not Kurt. 
You hand it to Big Dogger, and he transforms into a giant bipedal cat-like monster that looks like a cross between a panther and a lion. <laughs> you and I are on the boat together, and uh, we depart Vermilion City after a shit ton of drama to finally head towards Celadon City. I know Luna wants to keep going for the Arcanine. Gutball runs into a cruise connoisseur who has an Arcanine he'd like to give away. Gutball asks the boat enthusiast if he can have him. The boat enthusiast says yes and gives Gutball an Arcanine hedge. Gutbull tells the others about the new Pokemon and they decide to name decide to find it a name. They choose Arcanine Hedge for the new Pokemon's name. Big Dogger gets on the cruise ship and decides to call up the insurance company to get the convertible replaced. Big Dogger mentions that he needs the car because he knows that it'll be uh, going to take a while before they get a new vehicle made. Campbell Insurance Company says that they will replace the car with an incidental model, regardless of whether or not it matches exactly what was insured. That sounds great to Big Donger, since the replacement car should be just like Big Donger's old one. He thanks Campbell Insurance Company for their insistence and hangs up. You buy the convertible and drive it back to the mansion. Okay, Gutbull will call Professor Oak, who is the grandfather of Big Dogger, and try to convince Oak that he should send the convertible to Gutbull. Oak says that does not that he does not know what Gutbull is talking about because he never received any correspondence from Gutbull. Gutbull tells the others that he will write a letter to Professor Oak and that they should do the same. <laughs> The group heads to the post office. You enter the post office. You see a sign advertising the services of the postmaster. There are also large doors leading outside. You hear the sound of waves rushing from behind the door. You walk up to the counter and talk to the postmaster. She says she has been, hey, she's seen your name through her desk and she remembers you. You tell her that you sent the Professor Oak a letter asking if you could, if he could send the car to you. She says that she has in indeed received the letter from you, and it is most interesting. She tells you that the Professor is very busy right now and that he might not be able to reply immediately. You ask if he has even received your letter yet. The Postmaster says that she has not. Uh... You say that you will let him know when he gets it. She says that she will hold on to the letter until he replies. <laughs> Big Donger arrives in Celadon City and meets with the gym leader. Big Donger tells Erica that he is the gym inspector and that he would like to inspect her gym badge. Erica protests that she is no longer a gym leader and asks why you would want to check her gym badge. Big Donger says that he's concerned that Erica may have used the badge for a legal activity. A legal activity? That sounds like a pretty serious accusation. Erica accuses Big Donger of blackmailing her. Big Donger explains that he simply wants to look at her badge and see if there's something suspicious about it. He offers to return the badge after his inspection. Erica refuses and insists that he leave immediately. Big Donger tells her that he has a warrant to search her gym and that he will not be leaving until she hands over the badge. Erica is convinced that Big Donger plans to steal her badge and sell it to the highest bidder. <laughs> she says that she will hand it over to you if you agree to duel. Big Donger accepts the challenge. A few minutes later, the duel begins. You watch the battle from the backstage where you see and hear everything that's happening. You are amazed by how well Big Donger battles against Erica. Realize that Big Donger is incredibly fast and skilled. However, it's hard to believe that he could defeat Erica without using any of his special moves available to him. 
Big Dogger appears to be unbeatable. It seems that Big Dogger will soon win the match. Suddenly, Erica disappears from the arena. Big Dogger looks around and sees her standing behind him. When Big Dogger turns around, Erica is gone again. Erica is nowhere to be found. You wonder where she might have gone. Big Donger finishes off the rest of the gym leaders that remain. He then takes Erica to the police station and demands that she confess to her crimes. Erica says that she will not tell him anything unless he agrees to fight her an in another path. <laughs> Big Donger thinks for a second again before agreeing. What the fuck? The next day, the duel begins. Big Donger watches the battle from backstage. You can see her and hear everything that's happening in the arena. Erica is faster than ever and makes Big Donger work very hard to beat her. Ultimately, though, Big Donger manages to defeat her. Erica disappears from the arena! Big Donger turns around and sees Erica standing behind him. Erica is gone. Again! No, not like this again! Big Donger asks if she's really innocent and if she'll surrender herself to the police. Erica claims that the police do not need to know about all the things she did when she was the gym leader. <laughs> she says that she will only give up her badge to Big Donger and no one else. Big Donger says he'll think about it. Big Donger heads out of the arena and goes to the police station to talk to the chief. The big dog, big dogger explains that he'll only turn Erica in if she promises not to kill herself during the interrogation. <laughs> Chief Hightower laughs at the suggestion and says that it isn't possible to guarantee someone won't commit suicide. Big dogger says that he will take care of the suicide. <laughs> big dogger hands Chief Hightower a note which reads, <laughs> "It reads." Suicide is impossible. <laughs> Big Donger says that he expects the police to turn Erica in within a week. The chief says that he hopes that Big Donger is right. Big Donger leaves the police station and returns home. Okay, that'll end that for now. Chat wants to go on a date with Erica to woo her. Gutbull asks Erica, the leader of Celadon Gym, if she'll go on a date and return for the gym badge. Erica says yes, and the two head to a restaurant to eat dinner. Gutbull and Erica share a meal at a fasty, uh, fancy restaurant. During dessert, Gutbull asks Erica if she would consider becoming his girlfriend. She says no. Gutbull apologizes and promises to stop bothering her. Gutbull decides to focus on the battle at hand and heads to the hotel. Gutbull goes to the gym and tells Erica to join him. She agrees to battle him. Gutbull summons a flame serpent and sends it at her. Erica uses a shield bash to block the attack and counters with a quick claw. Gutbull deflects the attack with his shield and counters the with a shield bash. Erica goes in for the final attack, but before she can finish, Gutbull flings a rapid ash at him. <laughs> Sudden impact knocks Erica off her feet. So you've learned uh, from the past uh, to carry a gut or a fucking rapid ash egg with you guys so that you can throw it at people. Very impressive. The gym leader says that she is very impressed and takes a moment to compose herself. He then says that he will now turn into his po turn his pokemon into wait turn his pokemon to finish gutbull off the gym leader calls the pokemon forward and sends a swift slash towards gutbull the swift slash hits gutbull and knocks him to the ground he then says he will now turn his pokemon to finish erica off the gym leader calls his pokemon forward and sends an avalanche towards erica Avalanche hit, hits Erica, knocking her to the ground. Congratulates Erica on her victory and says that he owes her a favor. Okay, you're not getting two favors from different gym leaders. You now have five out of eight badges needed to go through uh, the snake way. The next day, Big Dogger returns to the jail and tells Erica he will marry her if she gives him the gym badge. 
Erica says that she doesn't want to get married. Big Donner threatens to kill her if she does not agree to his terms. Erica says that she would rather die than to live in fear of his threat. <laughs> Big Donner says that he'll have to kill her anyway. Erica decides to try and escape. Erica tries to run away. Big Donner chases her down and drags her back to the police. <laughs> you're heading down this way, so you're you're on this path. Gutbull is going to start an IRL stream on his way to Fuchsia City in an attempt to get partnered on Twitch. Gutbull walks through the streets of Vermilion towards the west. Gutbull heads to the bar where he sees a man playing a guitar. The singer-songwriter introduces himself at Cat Racker. Cat Raker. Cat Raker says that he likes Gutbull's music and asks if he can sing one of his songs. Gutbull says yes, and Cat Raker sings the best song ever written. Okay, Gutbull and Cat Raker performed the song live on Twitch. Gutbull is surprised by the amount of viewers he's attracted to his stream. Gutbull is glad that he started streaming so early, otherwise he would have had difficulty finding an audience. Gutbull tries to apply for partnership after the stream ends. But he is told that he needs a minimum number of subscribers to Twitch. Gutbull checks his subscriber count to find out there are only 534 people subscribed to his channel. Gutbull decides to wait some more and try again tomorrow. Okay, okay, you guys, you might need to stream for two days before you can get partnered. Big Donger is going to call Kurt's family and inform them about the tragedy and ask them if they have any more children that might be able to help Big Donger on his Pokemon adventure. Erica is taken into custody as she is being dragged through the... F oh, right. I haven't even got the gym badge. <laughs> Wait. The badge that Big Donger had been holding in his hand is left hand is missing. Erica wonders where the badge could have disappeared to. She then realizes that Big Donger must have put it on her own badge as a joke. Erica goes back inside and asks Big Donger why he thought she'd wear his badge. <laughs> okay, Big Donger tells Erica he'll explain the joke later. But first, he needs to find out if Kurt has any family that will help on his adventure. Erica says that she believes there's one more child. <laughs> Big Donger thanks her and leaves the police station. The next morning, Big Donger arrives at the hospital where Kurt... <laughs> <laughs> Big Donger asks the doctor if he knows any other Kurt Cobains. <laughs> uh, Kurt's parents come in and tell Big Donger that their son has died. <laughs> Big Donger apologizes for intruding and leaves the hospital. Okay, so Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt's brother is also dead. Stream an interview with the gym leader and ask for a badge during the interview? Gutbull arrives in Fuchsia and asks Koga if he can interview him for his stream. Koga says that he would love to do it. Gutbull asks Koga if he has some time for a short break. Koga says that he does. He takes a seat at the table. Gutbull says that he wants to ask Koga some questions. Koga says that he's happy to answer them. Gutbull asks Koga how many gyms there are in the region. I'm curious to see the answer here. Koga says that there are six gym leaders. Gutbull asks Koga how often he travels around the region. Koga says that he normally only visits the cities, but occasionally goes into the mountains. Asks him if he can have a, a gym badge for his show. Koga says that he would be honored to give him a gym badge. Gutbull asks Koga what type of Pokemon he uses the most. Koga says that his current team consists of grass, water, and fire. Big Dogger returns to speak with Erica. He tells her, I've got a really funny joke, but you've got to give me your gym badge first. Erica refuses. Big Dogger forces Erica to give him her badge. After a short struggle, she finally gives it up. Big Donger places the badge on his own and says, Ha ha! Now I've got 
Okay, so, as Big Daughter walks away, he asks Erica, Why do you never shower with a Pikachu? Wait. <laughs> I fucked the entire joke up. This makes it even funnier. Erica says that she showers with a wiggling tongue. <laughs> uh, uh, Big Dogger asks if she smells like a wiggly tub. Erica says that she used to, but lately she started to get a little sick of it. <laughs> Big Donger says, Cause it might Pokemon. Wait, that's not right. <laughs> Erica explains that she meant to say, Because it might Pokemon. <laughs> Big Donger says that he still doesn't understand what the problem is. Erica tells him that Wiggly Tough smells like running eggs. <laughs> Gutbull hears that there may be some shark pita vacationing in the area and tries to find and catch one. Gutbull catches a rare shark pita and asks Koga for a, a, the gym badge. Koga gives him a shiny gold gym badge and tells him that he should visit him sometime. Gold uh, G Gutbull says that he will and leaves the gym. <laughs> Big Donger wants to become more powerful, and he hears that there's an ice ice fruit on this route and tries to claim it for himself. When he arrives to the place, he finds the location is already occupied by Wobbuffet and Zubat. Erica comes out to confront him. Bum, bum, bum! Big Donger tells her that he did not mean to trespass. Erica tells him that... He shouldn't have stolen the food that is rightfully hers. Big Dogger gets mad and says he will claim the food if it means he can eat it. Erica says that she did not steal the food. She found the food when she was searching for Kurt. Kurt's dead! Don't bring up his name! Big Dogger thinks that Erica is lying, but doesn't know why. Big Dogger tells Erica that he'll go ahead and take the food. <laughs> Big Donger calls a Pokemon battle against Erica. Erica tells Big Donger that she is ready for the fight. Big Donger attacks with his Big Donger <laughs> and defeats Erica in a single hit. Erica says that he should have saved some energy for the next match. Big Donger agrees. Big Donger continues to attack Erica until she is defeated. Erica says that she wishes. She had tried to make peace instead of fighting. Big Dogger goes to take the fruit from the other Pokemon, but they refuse to give it up so easily. Big Dogger uses his strong dog <laughs> and knocks them all out. Big Dogger takes the eyesight fruit and leaves. All right, Gutbull asks Mew if he can teleport them back to Saffron City. Mew says that he'll need to check with the other Pokemon first. Gutbull says that he doesn't care about the other Pokemon. He just wants to go home. The others agree, and Mew teleports them back to Saffron City. Okay, okay. All right. Gutbull's stream have been going well, so he reapplies for partnership. Receives response saying that he is still too new to qualify for partnership. Gutbull decides to keep streaming anyway. Gutbull heads to a bar where he sees an old friend from v Vermilion. Ooh, this could be potentially something for you, chat. Gutbull asks the man if he is ready for a rematch. The man says he is. Gutbull summons his lightning warthog. <laughs> the man summons a magmar. As they prepare to battle, the man says that he has a special move. A sphere of energy forms under his foot, and he lifts it up. It explodes, sending shockwaves across the battlefield. Magmar and Warthog are knocked away by the blast. The man says he is very disappointed, but there is no sense in crying over spilled milk. Gutbolt says that he is not upset. 
Big Donger arrives in Fuchsia City and asks Koga if in return for taking him to the Safari... Uh, actually, let's make that Safari Zone. Safari Zone, if Koga will give, give Big Donger a badge in return. Koga says that while he does want to see Big Donger pass the Safari Zone, he isn't sure he's ready yet. Big Donger says since that he can't get a badge until he passes the Safari Zone, he'll have to take the badge away. Big Donger takes the badge and leaves the gymnasium. Big Donger arrives at the Safari Zone. <laughs> Wait. Big Donger arrives at the Safari Zone. He spots a group of wild Pokemon running towards him. What happens? Big Donger gets into a position and prepares to fight. A berry appears above Big Donger. It appears... It turns out to be a berry which doubles Big Dong's power. <laughs> Big Donger battles the wild Pokemon. Big Donger destroys the wild Pokemon and takes its berries. Big Donger continues through the Safari Zone. Big Donger reaches the end of the Safari Zone. Big Donger sees a sign warning that the Safari Zone is dangerous and that only the bravest dare enter. Big Donger decides to go in anyway. Big Donger enters the Safari Zone. Big Donger starts to hear strange noises coming from inside the Safari Zone. Big Donger wonders what could be making those sounds. Big Donger heads further in. Inside the Safari Zone, Big Donger discovers a Pokemon who's trying to open a locked door. Big Donger helps the Pokemon break down the door. Big Donger continues further in. Big Donger finds himself surrounded by a large number of Pokemon. The Pokemon all start to gather around Big Donger. Okay, am I just about to die? Big Donger realizes that he has no choice but to face these Pokemon. Big Donger calls a Pokemon battle and begins to fight. Big Donger defeats the wild Pokemon and takes its berries. Okay, Big Donger comes across a young boy who's being chased by a group of wild Pokemon. Big Donger tries to help the boy but is attacked by the wild Pokemon. Uh, okay, what are you guys doing, chat? Sabrina accepts the offer and thanks Gutbull. Gutbull goes to the gym to challenge the next gym leader. Gutbull enters the gym. The leader is a woman named Tanya. She wears a white blouse and black pants with, uh, uh, with trainers. Tanya says hello to Gutbull as she approaches him. Gutbull says that they're here to challenge her. Tanya says that she would like to see what he's got. Gutbull asks if she would like to fight in the arena. Tanya says that she would rather use a regular gym. Gutbull agrees and they head towards the center of the room. Tanya strikes a pose before beginning the match. Gut Butler and Tanya begin their but <laughs> battle. Gut Butler Lightning Warthog charges forward while Tanya fires off Bullet Seed. Gut Butler uses his tornado ability to afflect the, uh, deflect the Bullet Seed. His Lightning Warthog then turns behind a pillar. Tanya aims and fires a Bullet Seed at the same place. Gut Butler's tornado catches the Bullet Seed and throws it back at Tanya. She's knocked to the ground. By the, or she's shocked by this turn of events. Gut Butler smashes into the wall, knocking down the pillars and causing a large hole in the wall. Gut Butler falls through the hole. Gut Butler appears on the other side of the hole. Gut Butler's turn. Gut Butler turns invisible and begins to charge his lightning ward. Uh huh. Uh huh. Gut Butler jumps out of the hole and lands on the floor. He then unleashes a powerful electric attack on Tanya's body. Tanya screams in pain and falls to the ground. Gut Butler picks her up and tells her that he is sorry, but he cannot let his friends suffer like that. Tanya apologizes and says that it's not fair, or no wait, that it wasn't her fault. Gut Butler says he should leave now. Big Donger and the boy are able to escape the Safari Zone. Big Donger arrives at Fuchsia City. Big Donger thanks the boy for helping him and gives 
the badge he won in battle. Big Dogger returns to Koga and tells him that he found a boy lost in the safari zone and asks if saving him was enough to earn the gym badge. Koga says that while rescuing the boy certainly wasn't a bad thing, it was still a little too early for him to earn the gym badge. Big Dogger promises to work hard for the badge and heads back to the safari zone. Where are you going to go from here? Want to do a collab with Doug Doug? Gutbull heard that Doug Doug is doing a stream in Celadon City and calls up Doug Doug to see if he would like to collab. Doug Doug says that he'd be happy to do so. They decide to stream at Doug Doug's place in Celadon. The two streamers head north to get to their destination. Doug Doug's stream is broadcasted live from an apartment uh, an apartment in Celadon. Doug Doug is sitting in front of a camera and broadcasting to all his viewers. Several other people can be seen watching the stream. Doug Doug starts by introducing himself. He says that he streams under the name Dougie. <laughs> and that he is currently in his early 20s. He continues by saying he was born in Celadon. He went to the local school in Celadon and graduated at a young age. Doug Doug started streaming after he left school. Doug Doug says that he enjoys playing games and loves making other players laugh. Gutbull tries to apply for Twitch partnership again after streaming with Doug Doug Dougie. Gutbull is rejected yet again. Gutbull goes to the bar and sees a friend from his class. Gutbull asks the man how things are going. The man tells them that he's having some trouble getting any real money out of his stream. Gutbull says that he understands and suggests that the man try doing a non-streaming job. The man says that he's looking for something that pays better than what he's making streaming. Does Gutbull have any suggestions? Gutbull says that he does not know anything about that sort of thing. The man leaves. Gutbull decides to go home. Gutbull wonders why he never thought of that. <laughs> Big Donger spends all day in the Safari Zone, checking to see if any more children have got lost in the Safari Zone and assisting them in hopes that he'll receive the gym badge. Big Donger continues in the Safari Zone. Big Donger comes across the boy from earlier. Big Donger notices that that boy seems to be glowing. The boy says that he is actually a ghost and that he needs Big Donger's help if he wants to cross over into the afterlife. Oh my god, it's Kurt, chat. It's fucking Kurt. Big Donger opens the door to the spirit world and leads the boy inside. Big Donger closes the door behind him and tells the boy to come back when he's done crossing over. Uh, okay, Big Donger returns to Koga and informs him that he's helped the boy cross over to the afterlife. Big Donger asks, can I have the badge now? Koga says that while Donger did a good deed and saved the boy, he still hasn't earned the gym badge. Big Donger says that he'll wait! Okay, chat, what are you doing next? Do a 24-hour stream to get more subs and partnership. Gutbull decides that the best way to get partnered is to do a 24-hour stream of his journey back to Fuchsia City. He reapplies for Twitch partner during the 24-hour stream. Gutbull finishes his stream and receives a notification that he's been partnered! Gut Butler begins his new quest. Gut Butler heads west towards Celadon. Okay, you've been partnered, chat. Big Donger feels like Koga's leading him on a wild goose chase and threatens to make a video on YouTube calling out Koga if he doesn't give him the gym badge. Koga backs down and gives Big Donger his gym badge. Big Donger is now a member of the Fuchsia City Gym. Koga congratulates Big Donger and says that he has worked hard and earned the right to wear the gym badge. <laughs> Back to you, chat. Okay, starting a highlight channel. Now that uh, Gutbull is partnered on Twitch, he decides that he needs to make a highlight channel on YouTube. Gutbull creates a YouTube account and posts his highlights from his recent stream. Gut Butler uploads videos of him fighting the gym leaders and his battle with Tanya. 
Ga Gut Butler updates his YouTube channel every time he streams. All right, Big Donger calls Kurt's parents and lets them know that he's returning to Saffron City and asks them if they can offer any assistance in defeating the Saffron gym leader. Kurt's parents say that they are proud of their son and they will take care of everything. Big Donger thanks them and heads north. Big Donger arrives in Saffron City. Okay, so I'm getting close to Saffron. Gut Bull arrives in Cinnabar Island where he... He has Mew challenge the leader Blaine to a battle while Gut Bull streams it to Twitch. Gut Butler wins his battle against Blaine and is rewarded with a number of items. Gut Butler sells his Pokemon team and makes enough money to buy the map of the region. <laughs> Gut Butler heads east to Celadon City to meet up with Doug and Gut Bull resumes his journey. Gut Butler says goodbye to Doug Dew and takes to the road to Celadon City. Once Big Donger arrives in Saffron City, he meets with Kurt's parents. Big Donger says, Kurt knew how to defeat Sabrina. Do you know what I must do to receive her badge? Kurt's parents say they're not sure if that would be possible. Big Donger says that he's willing to try anything once and asks them to show him where Saprina is training. Kurt's parents tell him that she's training just outside the city limits. Kurt's parents say that they'll need to lead Big Donger to her. Big Donger heads west. Big Donger reaches the outskirts of the city. Kurt's parents say that they'll meet him there. Big Donger heads east. Big Donger arrives at the edge of the city. Big Donger finds Kurt's parents waiting for him. Kurt's parents say they are pleased to meet him. <laughs> Kurt's parents say that Sabrina isn't easy to beat and that they've never seen anyone defeat her before. Big Donger thanks them for their time and asks if they could teach him the moves needed to defeat Sabrina. Kurt's parents say that they don't think that would be possible. Big Donger says that he'll prove them wrong and heads to the Saffron Gym. All right, chat. So you are, I guess, up back here in Celadon after selling all your Pokemon. Gutbull recalls that the leader of the gym in Mutropolis offered to help him in a pinch. Gutbull calls up the gym leader and explains he had to sell all his Pokemon to buy a map. Is there anything that Mutropolis leader can do to help get his Pokemon back? The gym leader tells Gutbull that he would really appreciate it if he could bring his Pokemon to the gym so they can talk. Gutbull agrees to come to Celadon City. Gutbull arrives at the gym and talks to the leader about his Pokemon. The leader says that he will give them back as soon as Gutbull catches another Pokemon to replace the ones he sold. Big Donger heads back to Saffron Gym, trying to think of what he can do to earn his next gym badge. He meets Sabrina and tells her he will buy her as much ice cream as she can eat if she gives him the gym badge. Sabrina laughs and says she didn't realize that he was such a nice guy. She says that she'd be happy to give him the gym badge if he could beat her in battle. Oh. You wanna you wanna battle then? Do you? I mean, is the ice cream not cool? Is it not chill? Sabrina tells Big Donger that it'll take some time, but that she'll be ready for him in an hour. Big Donger says that he can handle that. Big Donger heads to the Saffron City gym and waits outside the gym. Kurt's parents arrive to tell Sabrina that Big Donger is here. Big Donger enters the Saffron City Gym. Sabrina greets Big Donger and says, Hello! Big Donger tells Sabrina that he's willing to fight her for a gym badge. Sabrina says that she thinks that Big Donger is cute. Big Donger says that he's willing to do whatever it takes to get a gym badge and asks Sabrina if she would mind if he had a quick shower before the battle. <laughs> <laughs> Sabrina agrees to let him wash up and heads to the bathroom. Big Donger goes to the shower and starts to take a long, hot bath. Big Donger hears the door open and looks to see uh, Sabrina standing there naked. Whoa! 
Big Dogger asks her why she's not wearing anything but a towel. Sabrina explains that she's only letting him use the shower because she wants to see what's under his karate uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Big Dogger says that he really needs to get clean and asks Sabrina to get dressed so that he can leave. <laughs> Sabrina says that they are going to stay naked until he be. <laughs> until he beats her in battle. <laughs> Big Donger asks Sabrina if she wouldn't mind if he went inside the changing room for privacy. Sabrina says that she'll go back into the gym. Big Donger changes clothes and returns to the gym. Sabrina says that she needs... She's ready and asks Big Donger if he's sure he's willing to do this. Big Donger says he doesn't have a choice. Big Donger throws a punch. That's Sabrina's face. Sabrina deflects it with her forearm and says that she was hoping he'd try something like that. Sabrina says that she'll take him down with her bare hands. I think she's still naked. Sabrina tells Big Dogger that she'll start by knocking him out, then f uh, finish him off with a brutal finishing move. Sabrina attacks Big Dogger. Big Dogger blocks one uh, attack after another. Big Dogger hits Sabrina with a powerful kick. Sabrina dodges and retaliates with her own devastating technique. <laughs> the crowd <laughs> I just want to imagine that she's not only naked, but now she's crab posing at me. ha <laughs> Got Bull heard of a new Pokemon farm that just opened up in the area, Jimbo's Rowlets. Got Bull her heads to the farm to try and get some Rowlet to replace his Pokemon he sold. Got Bull finds a few Rowlet and takes them back to the gym leader who accepts the new Pokemon. The gym leader says he is very grateful and gives Got Bull his old Pokemon back. Uh, okay, chat, so that is a Mewtwo named Mew. That is an Arcanine named Hedge. Nine Mews. Rapidash Sharkpedo. Big Donger blocks Sabrina's claw and counters it with a fast roundhouse kick. Sabrina attacks again. Big Donger blocks Sabrina's claws and lands a punch on her stomach. Sabrina is thrown back after or backwards and lands hard against the wall. Sabrina's face is now bruised and bloody. Sabrina tries to hit Big Donger, but he ducks her punch and connects with his own. Sabrina pushes herself up from the floor and says she has another surprise up her sleeve. She isn't wearing clothes, so I wonder what sleeve. Probably the one in the changing room still. Big Donger says that he's not impressed with anything she's done so far. Sabrina says that she's going to knock him unconscious with her bare hands. Sabrina charges at Big Donger and lands a vicious punch to his jaw. Big Donger falls to the ground unconscious. Big Donger wakes up. Sabrina says that she's sorry, but she has to kill him now! Big Donger tells Sabrina he has a better idea. Big Donger proposes to Sabrina. Sabrina says that she isn't surprised, but that she'll think about it. Big Donger says that he'll wait for her answer. Sabrina tells Big Donger that she thinks he's very sweet and that she'll let him know one way or another by tomorrow morning. Big Donger says that he understands and thanks her. Sabrina says that she'll be waiting for his call. Sabrina leaves the gym. Big Donger wonders if Sabrina remembers how they met. <laughs> Wait, are we going to get some backstory here? <laughs> Sabrina smiles and says that she does. Sabrina says that she thinks he's a special person. Sabrina tells Big Donger that she hopes that it turns out well for them both. Big Donger calls Sabrina in the morning. Sabrina calls him back and tells, the, tells him that she'll say yes. Sabrina tells Big Donger that she's looking forward to meeting him. Big Donger says that he'll pick her up at 12 noon. Like to start a TikTok channel to promote your Twitch stream? All right, quick chat. What's the TikTok trend that you're going to follow? 
Gut Bull knows the best way to become successful on Twitch is to make TikTok trends. Gut Bull knows Pikachu dancing is bound to get tons of views. Gut Bull goes to the Pokemon Center and trades his Rowlet for Pikachu. Gut Bull then heads to Celadon City to see if he can find someone to help make a video of him dancing. Gut Bull enters the Pokemon Center and asks the receptionist if she can help him make a video of him dancing. The receptionist looks down her nose at Gut Bull and tells him that she does not have the tools or the skills to do such a thing. Gut Bull says that it's fine and thanks for nothing! Wow, chat, you guys have become the fucking... the rival. <laughs> Gut Bull walks over to the Pokemon Center Cafe and orders a drink. Gut Bull asks the Pokemon Center worker if he can use the TV in the Pokemon Center to record himself dancing. She says that she cannot allow that to happen without permission from the gym leader. Gut Bull asks the gym leader or if the gym leader has a problem with him recording himself dancing. <laughs> the gym leader says that he does not care as long as Gut Bull does not hurt his Pokemon while he is doing it. Gut Bull says that he will be sure to make it look like he's being gentle with his Pokemon. Gut Bull starts recording himself dancing in the Pokemon Center. <laughs> Gut Bull posts the video on TikTok and waits to see if the video goes viral. Gut Bull's video goes super duper viral, almost gets Three million views, let's go! Gut Bull is now famous and rich. He decides to celebrate by buying an island off the coast of Fuchsia. Big Donger arrives to pick up his fiance, Sabrina, and asks if he can have her badge. Sabrina says that she's not going to give it to him right away. Sabrina suggests that she should, they should get married first. Big Donger accepts Sabrina's proposal. Big Donger says that he couldn't be happier and asks Sabrina... <laughs> <laughs> if she likes Chinese food. Sabrina says she loves it. Big Donger says that he knows a great place to eat. Sabrina says that she's hungry. Big Donger leads Sabrina to his home. You guys are now back up at Cerulean City. Going to open a merch store? Gut Bull, who is now famous, would like to attempt to open a merch store. Gut Bull realizes he doesn't know how to create merchandise or run a store. Gut Bull decides to head south to Fuchsia to learn more about running a business. Gut Bull meets with a man named Bill. <laughs> Bill tells Gut Bull that he can teach him everything he knew needs to know about starting a merch business. Gut Bull happily signs up for the courses. Gut Bull learns all about different types of merchandise. Gut Bull puts together a list of everything he wants to make. After a fancy Chinese dinner, Big Donger tells Sabrina that his dream is to defeat his rival, Gut Bull. Big Donger asks Sabrina for the saffron badge so that he can continue his journey. Big Donger tells Sabrina that he's going to enter the tournament. Sabrina is happy for Big Donger but says that she's worried. Sabrina feels guilty about accepting Big Donger's proposal, knows that, knowing that he wants to fight. Big Donger explains that defeating Gut Bull will be his greatest achievement and that winning the championship would mean everything to him. Sabrina says that she won't stand in his way. Sabrina tells Big Donger that she's sorry. Okay, Big Donger tells her with the prize money that they will be able to grow old together out in the countryside. He asks again for the Saffron Gym Badge. Sabrina says that she still needs time to think. Big Donger says that he'll be patient and that he understands. Big Donger says he's going to get some sleep. Gut Bull, now armed with the knowledge of how to start a merch line, returns to Saffron City where he believes his clothing line will sell well. Gut Bull goes to the Pokemon Center and asks the receptionist if he can help him make a fashion line. The receptionist says that she can, but she will need to get the permission of the gym leader. Gut Bull asks if he can leave a message for the gym leader. The receptionist says that, that she'll put it on his desk. Gut Bull leaves the Pokemon Center and goes to the Pokemon Center Cafe. Gut Bull orders a drink and asks the Pokemon Center worker if he can use the TV to record himself making a fashion. 
<laughs> the receptionist says that he could use the TV to record it, and we'll need to get the approval of the gym leader. Gutbull says that that's okay and thanks for nothing. Gutbull goes to the Pokemon Center Cafe and watches the TV while he makes a fashion line. Gutbull uploads the video to TikTok. <laughs> Go super duper viral. <laughs> now you just have a TikTok about a merch line, but I don't think you actually have a merch line. <laughs> Wait, he decides to celebrate by buying a boat this time. In the morning, Big Donger talks to Sabrina again. Big Donger asks Sabrina if it's okay if I take... Oh, wait, shit. If I take the... Is it okay if I take the gym badge, babe? I'll return from my adventure soon, and we'll use the prize money to plan a wedding. Sabrina says that is fine with her. Big Donger says that he's going to have to go to the city and buys himself and explores <laughs> so he can look the part. I'm gonna call Big Donger to brag about our boat and find out how far he is behind. <laughs> Offer it to have Mew teleport him to Cinnabar Island. Gutbull calls Big Donger to brag about his boat and how famous he's gotten. Gutbull asks Big Donger if he'd like to get teleported to Cinnabar Island because Gutbull is absolutely destroying Big Donger's merch shop. <laughs> Big Donger says that he doesn't want any teleports. He then tells Gutbull that he should open up a new merch store. Gutbull realizes he doesn't know how to create <laughs> merch run stores. Gutbull wanted to use his generosity to make another viral video, but doesn't know what to do now that he can't film Big Dong or accepting his help. Gutbull decides to head southwest to Saffron City to learn more about running a business. Gutbull arrives in Saffron. He meets with a man named Bill. Big Donger heads east to Lavender Town. He goes to the Pokemon Tower where dead Pokemon are buried and attempts to find the Poke Flute. Big Donger finds the Poke Flute. Big Donger plays the Poke Flute. The ghost of a dead Pokemon appears and talks to Big Donger. The ghost tells Big Donger that he was killed by a monster named Bubbles. The ghost says that it wants revenge on Bubbles. The ghost asks Big Donger to help it destroy the monster. Big Donger says that he'll do what he can to help. Big Donger heads northwest to the Bubbled Dungeon. <laughs> Big Donger enters the Bubbled Dungeon. Big Donger finds the entrance to the monster's lair. Big Donger finds Bubble Room. <laughs> Big... Donger defeats the monster. He kills the monster, retreats into its bubble. Bubbles retreats into its bubble. Big Donger tries to open the bubble. Big Donger breaks the bubble. The bubble explodes. The giant bubble, a large amount of bubbles floats away. The giant bubble pops out of nowhere. The monster attacks Big Donger. Big Donger is knocked aside. Oh shit. Big, the monster is defeated, the monster dies, huge bubble pops. All right, chat, up to you. What are you doing next? The gut bull has taken two business classes. He feels he has enough knowledge to finally open his merch shop. He goes to the Saffron Mall to find a location to start his merchandise store. The manager says that he will need to talk to the gym leader before Gut Bull can rent out a store. Gut Bull goes to the Saffron City gym leader and asks for permission to open his merch store. The gym leader agrees to let Gut Bull open a shop if he promises to make a video of him opening the store and giving the gym leader a free shirt. Gut Bull promises to give the gym leader a free shirt and heads back to the Saffron Mall to find... A location to start his merch store. Gutbull finds a space in the mall and sets up his merchandise shop. He opens the doors and awaits for customers. Gutbull is officially a merch store owner. Let's go! Big Donger decides that getting revenge for the ghost probably isn't worth it. Big Donger heads towards a location. He heard a Snorlax is sleeping and tries to catch it for himself. Big Donger catches the Snorlax. The Donger, or Big Donger, looks around for something to cook the Snorlax. <laughs> Big Donger finds a stove. 
Big Dogger cooks the Snorlax on the stove. Going to head towards Victory Road and live stream our journey doing a subathon. Gut Bull decides he's going to run a subathon on Twitch while he heads to Victory Road to meet up with the Big Dogger to brag about his merchandise store. Gut Bull uploads the video to TikTok and waits to see if it goes viral. Gut Bull's video goes super duper viral. Almost gets 3 million views. Alright, do you buy something new this time? Is now famous and rich by his <laughs> yacht. Gut Bull calls Big Dogger to brag about his merchandise, merchandise store and asks if he can have a meeting to discuss opening a merch store. The receptionist says he cannot be seen by anyone until he gives the gym leader a shirt. Gut Bull says that he will give the gym leader a shirt and heads to the Pokemon Center. Your guys' move, right? You guys have been on one hell of an adventure so far, so let's see what we what we see. Gutbull calls Big Dogger to bray about his merchandise store and ask if they can meet to discuss opening a merch store. So I guess you guys want to go into business with me, which probably is not bad for me, honestly. I, I think I could probably use a business partner at this point. Decides he's gonna run a subathon. Oh no! Okay, all of a sudden you guys are now a guy still wearing the speedo. <laughs> okay, this one is easily my favorite. Chat. <laughs> Gutbull knows the best way to become successful on Twitch is to make TikTok trends. Gutbull knows Pikachu dancing is bound to get tons of views. Gutbull heads to the. Celadon City to see if someone will help him make a video of him dancing. Okay, there's the new Rowlet you found. You finally have some semblance of pants on. And it's a shiny Rowlet! Quietly and quickly continue to Victory Road. Gutbull continues to head towards Mount Moon to get the badge. Gutbull arrives at the mountain and climbs up the stairs to the top. Gutbull reaches the top and looks around. Gutbull hears footsteps behind him and turns to see Big Donder <laughs> coming up the steps. Quickly, Gutbull moves away from Big Donder so he can look at the badge. Gutbull realizes that he forgot to give Big Donder a <laughs> shirt. Gutbull re realizes he forgot to give Big Donder a shirt. <laughs> Hurriedly runs down the mountain and heads towards Cinnabar Island. Big Dogger knows how successful Gutbull has become and calls him up to ask if he can have 10,000 Poké Dollars to buy a boat. <laughs> Gutbull says that he could, but it'll cost him 10,000 Poké. Big Dogger says that he'll pay 20,000 Poké if Gutbull agrees to open a new merch store and give him 5% of everything. Gutbull agrees to the deal and says he'll open up a new merch store to give Big Donner 5% of everything. Gutbull learns how to, to open a merch store. I love that to repay you back. I'm gonna do absolutely nothing and earn five percent profits from your merch store so that I can fucking pay you back double what I owe. Big Donger opens a new merch star store called DongerSuperstore.com. <laughs> Big Donger gets his first sale and the Donger <laughs> does a victory dance. <laughs> Big Donger buys a yacht! Alright, chat, what's next for you guys? Gut Bull is furious that he was swindled by Big Donger and calls Parkser to try and sue Big Donger for 30,000 polka dollars. Gut Bull tries to convince Parkser that he is not crazy and that Big Donger duped him. Parkser is skeptical but agrees to take the case because he thinks the case will result in big money for him. Gut Bool is now suing Big Dogger for $30,000 and is trying to convince Parkser that he isn't crazy. Gut Bool goes to the Pokemon Center. Gut Bool asks one of the nurses to give Big Dogger 
<laughs> Gutbull takes a picture of Big Donder and sends it to Parkser as proof that Big Donger duped him. Gutbull apologizes to Parkser for wasting his time and gives him a raising. Gutbull heads back to the Pokemon Center to see if he can find Big Donger. Gutbull arrives at the Pokemon Center and asks the receptionist if she knows where Big Donger is. Gutbull asks why Big Donger left without giving <laughs> The receptionist says that Big Donger went to bed early after being tired all day. Gutbull asks why Big Donger left without giving him a shirt. The receptionist says that he gave her a note saying that he would be back later. Big Donger straps his boat to his yacht and sails in the direction of Cinnabar Island. Big Donger arrives at the volcano. Big Donger sees a fire Pokemon emerging from the volcano. Big Donger thinks that he should try to capture it. He throws a Pokeball at the fire Pokemon. I, do I win here? Do I win? Big Donger captures the fire Pokemon. Big Donger names his new Pokemon Inferno. Big Donger sets up a campfire, prepares to roast the fire Pokemon. What the fuck? Why the frig did I name it if I was going to eat it? Big Donger decides to head towards the mountain. He finds the mountain. He climbs the mountain. I also ate the roasted fire Pokemon. So I guess I'm just feeling warmed up now. All right, chat. I leave it up to you. Head to Viridian City, we'll close our new merch store, decide to focus only on the original one due to a 20,000k shortfall. After the heavy loss of 20,000 polka dollars, Gutbull decides to close one of his stores and move his merchandise to the other. Gutbull decides to sell his merchandise in the East Mall. Gutbull hopes that people will buy his shirts. Starts selling his merchandise, sells a lot of shirts, decides to expand his merchandise, travels to Saffron City to be started. <laughs> Big Donger finds the gym leader, Blaine, and offers him some tasty grilled Snorlax in return for the Inferno badge. Blaine accepts the offer. Big Donger wins the fight and claims the Inferno badge goes back down the mountain and arrives at the beach. Okay, you guys next. Gutbull arrives back in Viridian City, offers the mayor of the city to buy the gym. The mayor agrees to buy the gym and lets Gutbull keep the money instead of paying taxes on the sale. Gutbull is now the gym leader of Viridian City Gym. Gutbull meets up with Big Donger to confront him about his merchandise store. <laughs> Big Donger checks Twitter and sees that Gutbull has purchased the Viridian City Gym. He knows this means war and asks Goku to use instant transmission to get them to Viridian City as fast as possible. Goku uses instant transmission and teleports Big Donger, Sabrina, and Frieza into Viridian City. Big Donger goes to the gym. Big Donger goes to the gym and challenges the gym leader. What will you do, chat? Instead of accepting the challenge, we shall go to Victory Road, taking all Viridian City badges with us. Gutbull, now the leader of the gym, tries to deny Big Donger's request for a battle and instead tries to escape the city. Gutbull is chased by Big Donder through the streets of Viridian City. Big Donder catches up with Gutbull and pummels him into submission. Gutbull is knocked out cold and taken back to the Pokemon Center in Viridian. Gutbowler wakes up and sees Big Donder holding the badge. Gutbowler is angry that Big Donder got away and that he lost 30,000 Poké Dollars. Gutbowler is furious that he could have won but Big Donder has the badge. Gutbuller wonders how he will ever get revenge on Big Donder. Gutbuller is depressed because he just realized that he was stooped by Big Donder. Gutbull flees Viridian City towards uh, Victory Road to explain that Big Donger has illegally acquired his gym badge and not to let him through. Gutbuller tells the gym member of the gym 
that there is going to be a battle between Big Donder and himself. Gutbull is surprised that he is now battling against Big Donger. Gutbuller challenges Big Donger to a Pokemon battle. Gutbuller wins the first match. Gutbuller goes to the Pokemon Center after winning. He realizes that he hasn't given Big Donger a shot. <laughs> Gutbuller hurries back to the gym and gives Big Donder a shirt. Gutbuller is convinced that he now owns the gym and that he plans to have a celebration in the honor of his new title. Gutbuller is about to head over to the Pokemon Center when Big Donder interrupts him. Big Donder gives Gutbull a bath. <laughs> Gutbuller is stunned that Big Donder has the badge. Shocked that Big Donder stole his badge and that he's just lost 30,000 Poke Dollars. Gutbuller is enraged and thinks that he should have a rematch with Big Donder. All right, Gutbuller heads back to the gym to challenge Big Donder. Gutbuller is surprised that Big Donder beat him. Gutbuller is saddened that he couldn't win, even though Big Donder had the same Pokemon. After returning the stolen badge and defeating Gutbull in a fair fight, Big Donger asks Gutbull if he can have the badge back. Gutbull says that it's not about the badge, it's about pride. Big Donger says that he understands that, and he would be happy to leave with only 10,000 Poke Dollars that he owes him. <laughs> Gutbull says that he won't take any less than 20,000 Poke Dollars. Big Donger agrees to this and they settle on the price. Big Donger gives P Gutbull the 10,000 Poke Dollars and leaves the chat. <laughs> Back to chat. Gutbull heads to Victor, uh, yeah, to Victory Road to present his badges to the officiator of the Elite Four. Gutbuller congratulations, uh, congratulates Big Donner on his win and says he has no problem with losing. Gutbuller says that he wanted to give Big Donner a rematch. Gutbuller explains Big Donner's illegal possession of the gym badge. The Elite Four member calls the mayor of Viridian City. Mayor comes to the gym to tell Gutbuller that he cannot do anything about Big Donner's ownership of the gym badge. Gut Buller is mad. The mayor did nothing to help him. The mayor leaves Viridian City. Gut Buller is depressed because he still doesn't own the gym and has no idea what to do next. Upset that he le lost the 30,000 Poke Dollars and he wants to make sure that he never loses to him again. Gut Buller wanders around Viridian City streets looking for any way to get revenge on Big Donder. Big Donger knows he'll have to resort to legal action and calls Parkser to help him sue Gutbull for the Viridian Gym Badge, the 10,000 polka dollars he's owed, and 10,000 polka dollars he spent on the yacht. Okay, now this is getting into me a huge legal dispute. Parkser says he can handle the case and tells Big Donger to stay put while he takes care of the lawsuit. Parkser begins the trial. Big Donger, Big Donger goes to the lawyer's office. Big Donger talks to Parkser. Parkser says that it's too late for any sort of settlement and that there's no way Gutbull could have been unaware of the fact that the Big Donder has already taken possession of the Viridian City gym. Big Donger says that the 10,000 Poke Dollars, he's <laughs> all that mattered. Parkser says that he could have settled for 15,000, but that he held out for 20,000 because he wanted to make an example out of Big Donder. Donder asks if he can <laughs> say anything else. Parkser says that he doesn't know what more there is to say. Parkser closes the case. Big Donger is victorious. Big Donger is the main character. Big Donger says that he wants to try and get his old ba job back at the gym. Gutbull says that he will give Big Donger his job back if he can defeat him in a fight. Big Donger agrees <laughs> to deal and challenges Gutbull to a battle. Gutbull challenges Big Donger to a battle. Big Donger beats Gutbull in a fair fight. Okay, so I guess I have my job. <laughs>
All right, chat, what are you going to do next? Try and catch a Nido King? Traveling up Victory Road, Gutbull notices a Nido King and Nido Queen bumping uglies and tries to catch both of them. Gutbuller is surprised that he caught the Nido Queen and surprised that he caught the Nido King. Big Donger arrives at Victory Road and shows the attendant all his badges. The attendant congratulates Big Donger on his accomplishment and hands him the 8th gym badge. I'm not gonna question it! Okay! Big Donger feels proud. Big Donger decides to get revenge on Gutbull by challenging him to a rematch. <laughs> Alright, chat, back to you. Bruno is up first, chat. All right, chat. Bruno is the first challenger of the Elite Four. Gutbull will have his army of Mews attack Bruno. Bruno is defeated by Gutbuller. Gutbuller is very impressed with himself and decides to go to the Pokemon Center and rest up before his next battle. Gutbuller returns to his gym and congratulates the team on their hard work. Big Donger has heard of a legendary bird named Moltres that lives in the area and tries to catch it. Big Donger fails to catch the legendary bird. Big Donger sets up a campfire and prepares for sleep. The next opponent Gut, ba uh, Gut Bowler will face will face is Lorelei. Gut Bowler commands the new the Mew army to start attacking her. Lorelei is defeated by Gut Bowler. Very happy he got to kill two birds with one stone. Gut Bowler is pleased with himself and plans to have another celebration at his gym. <laughs> Big Donger challenges Bruno to a crane game challenge. Whoever gets the most items wins. Big Donger wins. Big Donger heads back to the Pokemon Center. Big Donger talks to the nurse. The nurse gives Big Donger some medicine and tells him to come back tomorrow. You're up Gut Bull is to face Lance next, but Lance is the toughest trainer they've faced yet. He's a dragon master. Gut Bowler orders the Mew to take on Lance. Gut Bowler is disappointed that he could not defeat Lance. Gut Bowler is devastated that he can't beat Lance. Big Donger is to face Lorelei next. Her female charms are almost too much to resist. Big Donger goes to the gym, fights Lorelei. Lorelei is defeated. Big Donger returns home. Big Donger is the main character. Gutbull returns, more determined than ever to beat Lance. He commands the horde of Mews to initiate combat. Lance is defeated by Gutbuller. Gutbuller is elated that he won his first Pokemon battle against the Elite Four is excited you have beaten the Elite Four, and now he owns the gym. Big Donger knows the next opponent is the most fearsome and powerful yet, so he calls up Mega Meme to use Explosion and help him win his next battle. Mega Meme uses Explosion! Uh, it's not supposed to be Lorelei. It is supposed to be... Um... Uh, Lance, but I totally forgot to uh, include his name. All right, chat. The final one. The last opponent to pay uh, the, the last opponent to face and possibly one of the most powerful trainers in Kanto is Agatha, the super duper old chick. Gut Bull will send out an army of Mews and try to subdue her. Agatha is defeated by Gut Buller and is relieved that he finally beat Agatha. Gutbuller is confident that he would win any other gym leader in Kanto. Well, chat, that means that you won. Or have you? Only one challenger stands between Big Donger and victory of the Elite Four. Big Donger tells Agatha, First person to fall asleep loses. <laughs> Agatha falls asleep. Big Donger wins. <laughs> oh my god, it's still doing the fucking... Big Donder is the main character. Big Donder wants to meet the other three members of the Elite Four. Big Donder talks to the receptionist. Alright, chat. Well, that means... 
it could only end one way. I really, <laughs> no matter what happens here, somebody gets a free t-shirt. <laughs> Both Big Donger and Gutbull had been victorious in bringing down the Elite Four, and so they would have to battle each other to see who would lay claim to the 30,000 polka dollars and the gym in Viridian City. This last fight was for all the marbles. Gutbuller is sent out first. Gutbuller commands the horde of Muse to attack Big Donger. Big Donger uses his psychic power to stop Muse from attacking him. The horde of Muse is defeated by Big Donger. No way. Big Donger is victorious. Gut Buller is stunned that his gym is taken away from him. Gut Buller is sad that he lost Big Donger in a battle. Big Donger challenges Gut Bull to a best of three. Winner takes all for real after that. Gut Buller accepts the challenge. Gut Buller is worried about the third match. You should probably worry about the second match first. Concerned that he might lose and is alarmed that he might lose badly. Big Donder tells the Muse to attack Gut Bull. Gut Buller commands the Muse to attack Big Donger. Big Donder is defeated by Gut Buller. Instead of a third battle, Gutbull asks Big Donger if he'll accept the corpse of Brock, of Brock in exchange for the title of the best trainer in Kanto. Big Donder agrees to the deal. Gutbuller is happy to be the new gym leader of Viridian City. Gutbuller is proud of the gym and the team he's built. And thusly, chat, you go on to win the first ever... Twitch Plays a Double D Edition. An unprecedented ending using Brock's corpse. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs>